This session was a short 30 days designed to primarily craft a budget, but there were plenty of other initiatives put forth. Many did not survive. That included legalizing marijuana, tapping the land grant permanent fund for expanded early childhood education efforts, confirming education secretary designate Hannah Scandera, and getting a constitutional amendment to let voters decide on raising the minimum wage. Janice? Big grab bag there of stuff, but <laughs> <laughs> let's let's take minimum wage first. Seems sure. to be the juiciest thing out there. Um, the numbers were a difficulty for Democrats that going in, well, with I two see. being out sick, and and we have a couple of Democrats who were sort right. of Democrats, sort of not Democrats. We'll get to Laura on that one here in a second. But um, the, the chances going in was it was it cooked going in, or was there something that got missed that didn't allow this to happen? I don't know that anything got missed. I do think that the numbers. I mean, had. Mm -hmm. um, uh, representatives Archuleta and Chavez been there, mm -hmm. this we would be having a very different discussion. Mm -hmm. um, but and I I felt certain that there were a couple of Democrats that just really couldn't abide this. Uh, uh, so it was going to be. So was it cooked? No, gotcha. this was really down to the wire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And what happened at the very end? Uh, I I was looking at the numbers. And I'm going. Wait a minute. We're, we're missing some bodies here. Right. And right. Uh, I thought that was kind of interesting. And I bet you were doing a nose count from the gallery oh, during that vote. I was listening yeah. at home, but I knew you were there. And interesting. Again, to pick up on that point. The numbers just weren't there. Right. But it, yeah, yeah. they weren't there. So the number to get was 36. Yeah. That was already going to be difficult with two of the members gone. So it, it required some. You know, they were going to have to pick up some folks or have some people go take walks, whatever it was, to get to that number. Right. Um, and they just didn't make it. One Democrat, and we call those dinos, cause the double entendre being Democrat in name only and right. dinos. <laughs> right, right. So um, anyway, but one Democrat, um, sadly from my own um, hometown, uh, Donna Irwin voted against it, and then uh, Sandra Jeff didn't vote. My understanding was she took a walk, and there were three other people who also, mm -hmm. interestingly enough, from central New Mexico, Valencia County, both the Republican re representatives as well as um, Socorro County, Don Tripp, mm -hmm. um, took a walk. And those right. are obviously areas that are going to be really... Now, when you say take a walk, for those who don't watch politics uh, closely, because it could be a flip term, but it's right. literally... No, it's literally... Right. You, you get, well, most of the... What was interesting is yeah. most of the time... You know, you don't want to be on record one sure. way or the other. So, sure. so people walk, and you're not really supposed to do that, but people do that. Sure. Um, what was interesting is there was some people who didn't fully take a walk all the way out of the chambers. They were actually in within range. And if you were really? watching, well, if you were watching, the speaker right afterwards said, you know, as a reminder, if you're here, your obligation is to vote. And he reminded them a couple of times before the vote closed, and then again afterwards said it. Because, um, you know, you really, you better get lost during those times right. rather than be within the vicinity because right. it's clear you're, you're taking a walk. And, and that's really what happened. But I found it just really amazing that there was so many people who got involved, sure. um, you know, statewide and nationally to try to put pressure on some of these folks to vote for mm -hmm. it. Um, you know, our entire congressional delegation, except for Re Representative Pierce, called Sandra Jeff, as did um, Vice President Joe Biden, mm -hmm. urging her to vote for this. So a lot of people got involved. But I think more importantly, when you look at the counties that she represents, you know, McKinley County has like 23 percent of the households that are basically have, have children in the households that where neither parent has a full time wow. regular job. Huh. Um, and so we're, we're talking about a big, um, a big part of the constituency there. But don't you think affected. one of the mm -hmm. problems with this particular piece of legislation is it was a constitutional amendment. And I think there were many people on both sides of the aisle right. who I said agree. this does not belong, belong in the Constitution. Constitution. And I know Sandra Jeff felt that way too. I think there are many people who think, yes, it may be time to increase the minimum wage, mm -hmm. but this was not the way to do what it. What was interesting though is the argument on the other side was that if you take it outside of the political system and put it in the Constitution and then tie it to the, the consumer price index, ah. That it then isn't subject to the politics of, of each House mm -hmm. or Senate each time mm -hmm. around. Interesting. One of the challenges Please. that we always mm -hmm. see, of course, and I think this is a good example, is that is that increasing the minimum wages is pretty popular amongst the voters, but it's not apparently popular enough to become a single issue that prevents them from voting for a particular governor or a particular legislator. Mm -hmm. And so we see this in New Mexico that doesn't have a referendum system. The voters aren't able to speak directly on, mm -hmm. on legislation. This push toward a constitutional amendment for things that, um, I mean, I like this one better than I like some of the other ones, but sometimes things that you think this should be legislation or if we had a referendum, that mm -hmm. would make sense. Senator Boitano, let me read to you um, part of the response from the governor's office from Enrique Nell, her spokesperson. Regarding the minimum wage vote, the last two sentences are, it's understandable they are embarrassed that their tactic backfired today, but they have no one to blame 
for failing to raise the minimum wage but themselves. Was that a little grind in the, in the eye there for, for losing this constitutional vote, as, as Sophie is saying? Well, that yeah. seems a little tough. That's yeah. a tough... Uh, yeah, no, it's, po it's politics. Yeah, yeah. It's politics, and mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't surprise me a bit. And really, the constitutional route's not the way to go. I mean, we have a state statute right now that references minimum wage. It's kind of interesting that for some people, too, there are exceptions when it comes to the minimum wage. So right. we, like we say, workers. yeah, mm -hmm. you know, so if you're a domestic worker, it doesn't right. apply. If right. you're an agricultural worker, it doesn't That's apply. Right. So, mm -hmm. I mean, there are a lot of reasons for people to say no. Maybe they don't like the exceptions in the law. The economy is very tenuous right now. And I mean, this is a big deal. I mean, we, we hope we're rebounding, but other states are rebounding much quicker than we are. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to watch that. And this is definitely going to affect sure. uh, job, you know, job growth and, and small businesses, mm -hmm. and that's where our new businesses and new jobs are going to come from. Mm -hmm. The other thing, too, Please. is that um, you know, it's just surprising to me that people go to politicians when they, uh, when they want to make a little bit more money. I mean, there are tens of thousands of New Mexicans. If they want to make more money, they get a second job, they get more education, they become indispensable to sure. their employer, they ask for a raise. There's a whole boatload of things people can do to make a little bit of money. But, you know, to the mindset where we have to go to the politicians and say, listen, you've got to raise a minimum wage, so I've got to make more money. That mindset, to me, mm -hmm. is something that's really the, hard to the understand. The challenge, though, is that many New Mexicans have done those things that you've just described. They've gotten second jobs, and they're still struggling. It's still not enough. I mean, a minimum wage salaried person doing 40, or not salaried, but 40 mm -hmm. hours a week is making less than 20 grand a year, something right. like that. I mean, it's yep. it actually shocks the conscience mm -hmm. that you would be able to work. And several of the lobbyists make that much on one client in a 30 day session. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. <laughs> and we <laughs> see <laughs> and we right? see the yeah. example right now from business. I mean, a, 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 mm -hmm. an important employer here in Albuquerque uh, is Gap. They have corporate offices here, and they've just made the announcement that over the next two years they're going to raise their minimum wage right. to ten dollars an hour. And they mm -hmm. recognize what I think uh, progressives have been saying for some time. The Democratic Party has more or less embraced that the more workers make, the better they are able to take that money and put it back mm -hmm. into the economy, mm -hmm. especially at the minimum wage level. Folks are not hoarding money. Right. They're they're putting it back into Good local point. businesses, putting it back so, into several local. Several of our right. members in Please. our chamber, mm -hmm. um, the Green Chamber, talk about that because we're about the triple bottom line. So it's not just profit, but that's still an important part of it. But it's also taking care of people mm -hmm. and protecting the, the resources, mm -hmm. our place or our planet. Was was the angle of attack flawed for this? Should it not have been this approach for a constitutional amendment? Should it have been exactly what Ms. Jeff proposed? It should have been through legislation. I'm, I mean, I don't, I think that, you know, back to what um, mm -hmm. Sophie was saying, I mean, this, this route would then put it back up to the voters mm -hmm. in order for them to mm -hmm. vote on it. So I think it's, it's maximum in terms of participation from the sure. average um, person out there. You know, people turn it back out to the voters. So people have a difference of opinion about whether referendums should be used, you know, for various issues. But this was one where they decided, let's see what the voters would think. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it has polled very well. Sure. Um, and I think it's something that, you know, I'm not sure that it would have worked either if we had, um, if they had gone through sure. uh, just, you know, as a bill in the House or in, or in the Senate. Sure, 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 absolutely. Same, same. Well, right. I would say with the insider baseball of this is when you do a constitutional amendment, the words matter. And if the bill is not crafted correctly, mm -hmm. it will bite you. You know, one of the things about it being indexed, uh, you know, we are making the great assumption that everything is always going to go up. Well, we've seen since 2008, it doesn't always go up. Mm -hmm. But the indexing in this bill was only on an upward trajectory. Mm -hmm. That was the only way to go. And then there's the other side. You know, as a business owner, I will tell you the way the next step for us will be, we will have a much stricter 90-day evaluation period. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that, I mean, most people will do that because you use minimum wage to see if you've got a fit. Let, and me, throw, let me throw one more on the table, but just a little bit left. Uh, I'll start with you, Sophie. Mm -hmm. Early Childhood Education, Land Grant Permanent Fund, where do we stand now, now that that did not happen? It, it, does, does the idea appreciably change, or do people just go right back at this next time? I, I think that the coalition around um, mm -hmm. It, it increased funds for early childhood education is strong. Mm -hmm. It is diverse. I mean, it, it includes, as we've we've heard, uh, the Catholic Church, um, mm -hmm. many advocacy groups, 
teachers, et cetera. I think that that one is not dead. We're going to mm -hmm. continue to see mm -hmm. a push toward it. I can't predict whether it's always going to sure. be about a constitutional amendment. Sure. Let me get the rest of the table on that, too. What do you, what do you think? What do, what do we stand now with early childhood stuff and money? I mean, I think that it's going to continue to be a, yeah. a, something that they push. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Okay. Especially into the next election, it will be an issue. That makes sense. Now, in a minute, we're back with members of the Black History Month Organizing Committee to talk about the STEM Festival coming up.